We are now officially recording. Welcome to Friday Fighters uh, Street Fighter Duels Community Podcast. Uh, we're here to talk about Street Fighter Duels, and the topic of today I would like to ask everybody here is, what does the perfect Street Fighter Duels look like to you? Uh, this is a topic of constructive criticism. Well, words of the day that uh, Book is shared is constructive, productive, practical, and fruitful because a lot of the pre previous podcasts and in general the topic are uh, tend to be a lot of negative where yes there's bugs there's issues there's everyone knows but uh generally when people are very pitchforky they don't bring a solution along the way so this is where i would like to open the conversation of what people think would look like what it would look like for street fighter duels if it was five stars on the play store you know the potential of what the perfect game is what does it look like if anyone wa wants to you know start with it i i, I like to know Cause like for me i'm a simple man maybe a little bit more easier to pull on stuff um but in the in the sense where um I, I'm used to a gacha game where a banner would be for a unit and uh, the unit would be put in a general pool and but the 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 rate of pulling that unit would be slightly higher and then you know yes obviously the topic of pity where if you do a certain thing but like overall it allowed players to pull the units that they want so an option of that would be something that i'd look for but i also would like um not i think the event rotations and how things are are uh good i would like more interactive events similar to how the collab events are but in a smaller burst where instead of like okay it's a full day you have to wait 24 hours you got multiple floors or whatever maybe small events where it's like one floor kind of like the wonderland but a little bit more expanded on so like the middle ground of wonderland and collab events i think that would be you know a top-notch thing on maybe a monthly basis I'm not gonna lie, the reason why I asked earlier about the time was because I didn't realize it was Friday, I thought it was Sunday. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm on summer break and I have no idea what days are anymore and I just didn't realize it was Friday, so that's why I asked you uh, yeah, no, why there was a podcast today. It's all good. I, I know when time gets lost, you just like, wait, what day it is? Well, I, I was literally convinced it was Sunday. But uh, anyways, to pick up on the, the topic of what the ideal game would be, mm -hmm. I honestly... Like, even though I like the shit on this game, uh, I, I love it, right? I enjoy playing in it. But I think what would be really good for this game is a more direct line to the devs. In the sense that if there's a bug, um, not as meaningful as the, the bugs that get patched in the day, like, like do you remember the Evil Ryu event? Or the Akuma event, I, I don't remember. But there was this huge bug with the boss, so that was fixed in a day, right? Mm -hmm. But just the 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 way that was handled, I think it should be for for most of the bigger bugs, or at least the bugs we have like units they launch and then and not working. So, but one... do you think it would be um? My, I, two questions to that is: yeah. Would it be how would an easier line to the devs look like? Oh, and the other question is, could it be maybe um, we were asking for the devs to think a different in priority? Um, I think if they launch a unit and it launches with bugs and we report them, that it should be patched within a week and not within several months. Mm -hmm. Well, no, yeah, no, I definitely understand that. But how? Yeah. So, um. We definitely like that de definitely understanding of that like bugs and stuff should definitely be yeah um but like how how would that look like how can we get how would your yeah just how <laughs> uh my game so so 
in reality, I love the events. Like, I I don't think there's actually been like a bad event in my opinion. Uh, but what would make the game better is we all remember each can event. I fucking love that event, honestly. Like, like the way we had to do boss battles with every single server together, and like we had a common goal that was defeating the boss. That was uh, very. In it wasn't that very interactive, but it brought the community together, and then. It was the first event where we all had to like, okay, what's the best lineup? How can we maximize the events for the whole community? Uh, and I think they should try to bring that back. And also one other thing of the MHK event, and no, I'm not going to say PD, uh, was the rent a hero. You know, when the, when MHK launched and we all could get it for three days? Yeah. That was that was so good for the game. Uh, and that honestly would, would make the game also more enjoyable because it would give players that might not have access to that unit directly test out the unit and look for themselves uh, look at it themselves and see do i want to get this unit or do i keep on going for the unit that i'm already invested in sometimes they're at, uh, at ss rank and they need six more copies i'm talking master infernal units of course uh sometimes they're only at s rank and they they have to decide between maybe it's like adana summary ibuki which is the current debate because most people are going for Sagat right now and they're like, but summary book looks so cool. This would fix all those questions. But yeah, but in I mean, terms of events and in terms of gameplay, I, I, I like the game. Like I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm on 14 waves and I'm I'm struggling sometimes, but overall it's it's there is enough content for me. Sometimes it's it's a bit too gated like like tower waves, but honestly the way the challenge and tower base work, I like it. Yeah, I actually really do like how they're like, they space out their events. I think it's like every two weeks or three weeks. So like, that's pretty good. Um, it's definitely, it seems it's more like quality of life than if anything, because like the base game itself is amazing. Everyone enjoys uh, the teams uh, building, the theory crafting, the, 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 you know, the unit diversity. That's one of the things that I not many people um touch on is unit diversity. I really think that that's uh something that I give kudos to to the devs because it's like um a, a, every unit y yes obviously there's the Dudleys out there that people would just look at them and just like why you exist but I still feel like there's a home for for everyone. And you know, people have you know, fans, they're fans of dance and stuff like that. But you know, there's the other units that even though they can't quote unquote meet the standards that everyone has, they can still be the underdogs for some. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've we've seen this with Yun and Yang. Uh, that pain made a bit about it and i've also done some testing and these units are actually great and nobody actually was talking about them before it's uh but there's a lot of things to still discover in this game and, and hidden intricacies that we just haven't found yet which is which is nice it, it it's a good look because we know that there's there's units that will be discovered that are already in the game that will be good uh, and i uh, think for that's different what, types of content i honestly think that's a big reason why like in especially in, in this server you have the the hardcore dedicated few um because of the fact that we're all waiting for when all units are discovered and it's just a free fall at that mm -hmm. point everyone you know obviously new units are always gonna yeah. spice things up but like for me i'll use my example I was Dawson day one. I was waiting for y'all to catch up. Buka is poison. Chung Lee day one. He's waiting for everyone to catch up. You know, Tix, Guile day one, waiting for everyone to catch up. Now everyone there's uh, and other people. There's lurkers in here that I'm pretty sure they're like they're looking at us like saying, "Oh, we say Dudley sucks," but they're like, "Yeah, you know what? Dudley took me to chapter forty, and you all don't know nothing." Like, I'm I'm using Dudley in campaign at the moment on chapter thirty nine. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's what I'm saying. It's the, the 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 options are almost unlimited if you're just willing to try. Mm -hmm. But that that's a thing that'll come with time, right? 
because more and more people will get access to these six out of six cars and plus thirties. And then not everyone listens to the meta defined by the people. Same way that not everyone used uh, Mad Ryu when the game first launched and everyone thought it was the most broken character in the game. There's always some outliers, and if these outliers can prove that their units are great and people listen, then the game will get more diverse. And that that's I just like that, you know? Yeah, it's definitely a, a bonus that the game has. Um, I'm just curious if like maybe uh, Tix, the, the free-to-play god, has uh, an opinion for uh, uh, Mr. Booker, the semi-whale. Okay, well, the question was like how to make the game better, right? Or yeah. a construct game to say uh, to make it better. Yeah, like I what mean, does the perfect Street Fighter duels look like to you? Wait, you know, just thinking about like constructive, how to build, like, yeah, what what is missing, or what can you would you change, and how? Like, you got to actually give an example because, like, you know, it's easy to just be like, I wish pity was here. Yeah, we get it. Like. But what else? Like, what better to do for the game? I mean, like, like you mentioned with what Flake mentioned, like, there's nothing wrong with the gameplay itself. Like, that's why I'm still here, right? Just because of all the bullshit, like, the gameplay is what carried the whole the whole game. And, like, like you mentioned, the units are all fine. Nothing wrong with it. But, um, like, there's a lot of things that need to be addressed. Uh, and it's not being going through towards the devs i mean and and that like what i would change is that they should prioritize the like they they prioritize the community right but they don't prioritize like the pillars within the community like uh like hazing or chain blade yeah like and and many others like they they need to like keep them and retain them because if they're gone then there's no one else you know that would carry or that would uh keep the game i wouldn't say the game would die but then it would feel like it's gonna die because you know without any content or feed for the audience you know people are gonna get bored or they won't get as interested because there's no no sparks yeah there's no content yeah. no the content yeah, yeah, drives yeah. community and the community drives the game yeah the health and everything like that so yeah. then a more um, um like okay so how you would do that i don't know they have like a better content creator program within the community and uh i don't know like a test chat a test server so that they can do what they want to so them or uh something that would not yeah something that would help them or incentivize them to stay and make content uh and if they don't if they can't you know create uh comp not not like benefits or something it doesn't even have to be benefits in monetary it just it could be also like benefits in game like in game play, anything that would incent incentivize them yeah um also i mean the the root for everything like you mentioned, like like what Flake mentioned, is yeah they 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 struck a bad deal and then everything that is that is like nothing good can come because that deal is there and they're forced to do bad and there's nothing that we can say that would like okay you should add this improve this but nothing it won't change because the root is that you know the, the cost for everything is so expensive so then they can't change. Uh, change stuff for the good so i guess my one question and i i'm not a developer or anyone in the gaming industry so this is genuinely like coming from uh curiosity and if someone has the experience i'd love to hear it when it comes to obviously there's contracts and uh we need approvals and you know there's many chefs in the kitchen and stuff like that but uh i guess my thing is it's like if it comes to the product being faulty shouldn't it be 101 to correct the product yeah 100 percent. but there's always going to be some disagreement about like what faults even are to some extent like um 
basically the there's people on both sides of the discussion that have different expectations about what games are meant to do about how things should be monetized about what effect free to play populations have on the whale populations what effect that whole ecosystem has on each other all that sort of thing so it's just like them not agreeing on what needs to be fixed yeah like the, every every time something gets suggested to the dev team there's going to be some developer that goes oh that's super easy and and quick and we can do that in like two minutes and that's fine but then there's some guy in a suit that's like okay but we need to talk about the ramifications because if we do this then someone is going to spend less money here and this and that and so there's always going to be this balancing act that they have to play whenever any suggestion comes in when i take a long view at the game and like how the game is being played by its new players by its intermediate players and by its like experts who are you know the hardcore um, the main thing that I notice is the the numbers in the game. The scaling of everything is just so way out of whack. It's like if I sat down to create a game and just plugged in a bunch of dummy numbers and then started playing the game and then didn't actually recalibrate any of those numbers and then just kept adding to it, we would end up where we are here today, basically. So like... Currently, we have SS plus two gear that's giving us 8,000 attack or something like that. So you were saying that it should be a balance of numbers at the core for the most important thing at the end of the day? I'm, I'm talking like if, if I were to come in as, as an outsider and like fix this game up and make it the best thing it could be, I would do a total rework of the new player experience, the progression, and the, the just general numbers and the ways that the numbers play against each other and are calibrated because there are these huge walls of progression that are clearly not intended by the developer that we all hit. And then there are obviously those walls of progression that are intended by the developer that are like hard capped. And that's just, you know, obviously we, we all know that's intellectually lazy. There's, there's ways to do that that don't need to throw level 1500 enemies at us just it, it was basically their stopgap response to us being better at the game than than they intended. But we're here now, and we have these numbers now, so we need to answer to the reality of that and like recalibrate the new player experience and start shuffling around multi-team content and maybe introduce that a little bit earlier and like and maybe when we introduce triple S gear, we get away from flat stats entirely and just do percentage based stats and like stuff. You wanted to say something, Pix? Oh, yeah. I don't know if Book uh, got cut out in the uh, oh, yeah. in his intro, but then. Book. Sorry. Where, where did I leave off at? Uh, do you want to continue where you left off or? Yeah, where was I? I'm uh, sorry. We were talking about like the the reset of like how the free to play percentage stats on yeah. on uh, gear. Yeah, so like you you can look very early in the game and you can see quest rewards that give you like blues and yellows when you already can't benefit from those quest rewards, and that's like in the first couple days of playing, and then like you'll hit this wall at around chapter thirty five, thirty six, and you'll look around and you'll see everyone just sitting there with you. Um, and you'll, you'll get gear that you'll, okay. So like, look at the resonance system they just put in, um, you, what, what stats do they add? Like literally nothing, like an actual literal zero non-value rounding error amount of stat. They implemented this into the game basically as a, when you have a three-star X move, you get passives on your characters that match, but they added these stats to them too that literally don't do anything. It's like they, they don't even have a sense for what's going on in their own numbers in their own game. And so I think if they just did a hard look at the progression curve of difficulty in the game, the reward structures and like some of the weird places they use flat stats and some of the tiny, tiny insignificant numbers they use, like if, if they actually tweak some of that stuff, we'd have a much flatter curve of progression where you didn't have this like cluster of walls throughout the game really predictable walls and you instead had like you know i've been playing a few days longer than you so maybe i'm a, a couple stages after you rather than 
you know, you and I have both been playing. I've been playing for four months. You've been playing for two and a half months. We're both stuck on chapter 36 because it's chapter 36. Like, it shouldn't be like that. That's, that's basically where I'm at. Yeah, to add to, to what Bookish said, like about like new player progression and stuff like that. I mean, Flake did a free to play run. Well, I actually did also a free to play rush like the second time to catch on the servers to catch 6 40. But then they have like innate gate, I mean, innate blockage within the game to prevent you from actually progressing because you were too fast and too good for the game, right? And what, what basically happens is that, like, most of the stats, it, it's still beatable, but then their stats are, like, double. And then out of nowhere, uh, you come back the next day, it just goes down, which is weird. I notice the most in a uh, super meter. I notice if I progress way too fast, like, when I decided to climb tower again, I was noticing that after, like, 15 levels or something like that, the NPCs, their meter would just go crazy out of whack. And like, I could kill a guy and then suddenly the computer is rewarded two meter for me killing one of their units. And I'm like, where did that even come from? And then I'll see, they just snowball from that two meter that they got for you killing one of their, their, uh, their allies. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few books when it comes to waves and also just, just Challenges that, that I don't think are, are normal for the game. But, uh... The, the way the game is made and it alters the progress... It's over... It's it, You're able to overcome it, right? I've done it on my free-to-play account. I got to chapter 16 on the first 24 days and I know for a fact that there's been artificial hindrances that, that I overcame, of course, but... I think... It's okay, and the reason I'm gonna say it's okay is, let's say a new player got lucky and got there, right? He doesn't really know what to do with his stuff to play optimal, and then in reality, you all try to be as optimal as possible, right? Every single account. That would be your main, if you're, if you're making a second account to test out units, of course, that's a different story. I think this is also a way for them to, to contain players and get them to learn the game first before sending too many resources into track, into characters or, or random things from the store. That being said, though, I hate the fact that it exists, but I can somewhat understand why it is the case. It should have been done completely different, but yeah. Okay, so where where is the balance of that then? If, there is none. Uh, because like like I I get what you're saying where it's like it's kind of like a under um I guess a honeymoon or a tutorial for like section without actually making it as such where it's like alright this guy might not know he might destroy his account or whatever. But then some of these hard walls and hard caps are kind of like bonkers and ridiculous. Where is the middle line of that? I mean, what's well, uh, something to yeah. figure out for the devs? Like, I, I don't know what, what, what is good for this game and what isn't, right? Like, I have my ideas, but... Well, I mean, that's the, that you have to bring up your ideas. I'm asking you, what, 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 what does that look like? Um, honestly, just, just the first few waves of challenge should ideally introduce you to characters like you know how in some games the first few waves you get a character that you can use and that's usually a really good character and you learn how to use that character and you know that character is good and you'll go for it like let's say they they add a gal to your team it doesn't have to be plus five of course but just for maybe till stage uh, five you can just use a gal in your team and you make a team around him and 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 you just learn how to use it and it doesn't have to be gal i'm just bringing up gal because he's one of the most free to play friendly units and and also one of the best units in the game in general uh but it could be with poison or dalsim or whatever i don't really know but just introduce characters early into the game don't start off giving random 
like, like you get a fucking B copy of Ryu or Ken, and that is your decision, and you have to base your whole team around that. That is what the game currently gives you. And then you can script the draw, of course, and it's either Viper, Kami, or Poison, I think. Yeah. But that's basically all you get. Would clarity in the game make it better in terms of like like what book says uh they really need to make it a lot more clear that you need to get all four characters 240 to continue leveling them it's one of the largest oh yeah for sure in the community so it i wouldn't say like hand how hold people's hand let them know step by step but like at least let people know okay this happens at 240 this happens at this point or something along the lines of like um Maybe even a a uh with the guide section where you click your name, you know how it's a basic info, maybe somewhere in there to say like a beginner section, and then you could break down. Okay, uh, this is two forty. You need this. You should get the gear, the fighting spirit thirty unlocked. It's important and stuff like that. Or just yeah, that that's that's a very good point, and they should do it. But how are they going to do it? Because I. I... I don't know. The, they have tried it, right? With with the the what's it called again? Let me look at the press like after the game launched. Uh, you can click somewhere here. Lineup recommendations, right? Yeah, I, I mean, mean be real. Was, these lineup recommendations are, are fake as fuck. I mean, it, it it's a it's an interesting offer. They're trying, right? I mean, they're trying, but. The way they're trying is wrong because they're artificially putting in new units. But, uh, Tix, you wanted to mention something earlier or not? Oh, no, no, I was just like, uh, you guys were talking about like selecting characters, right? I was like, what if you had like a few characters you can test and right when you're at chapter five or something, you can take one of them after you play through the first five chapters or even more, maybe five is not even enough. And then you can select it out of the ones that you've tested or just chosen or played and then use that for your playthrough just like one free copy as like oh besides just the three that you get uh randomly you can just uh you know pick the one and then just go along with it uh, I, that was just from what you guys were talking about that what, what came to my mind would a test dummy solve a lot of the issues well, not solve issues, but would it make it better? Yeah, I mean, like, like you know, those. They really have a dummy there, and you could pick any team, all the equipment, the FS, whatever, and you could set, like, how many fighting spirits or what. So, like, that gives you the option to click on a character, and they'll say fighting spirit level, and you could test 5, 10, 20, 30, and you could select how many cards, 3 or 6, or 6 of 6. And and then that's it. But obviously, it's only in this mode. It doesn't mean that you have it out in story mode. It's just you can all the characters are unlocked to test in this mode this way. I mean, that's definitely a good idea. Um, maybe they don't want to do it because you know they want to get people to to spend and then to find out themselves, or maybe someone else to spend and find out themselves. Could also be you know for monetization mo monetary reasons mm -hmm. but it, i would do i would agree that you know that would be nice as a for a player base to have that to have those tools um but for me i would just rework how the trials work and maybe uh not like change like the, the levels or like everything like that but then have more options than just the three that they give because sometimes you want to know how the units work in the tag position or how the unit work in the assist, uh, but then it, or with other units, how the, the the ones that the game give maybe it's not even a good pair. You you you're already thinking I'm gonna pair this with with this unit, but then you can't see it happen. I think they should just rework the trial in terms of more accessibility in different units and also in different slots. Okay. Or else, yeah, we're going to have, like, the same situation with A-Chun, right? Like, people are complaining. Some, I think it, it might be intended, but, you know, uh, it, it, I do agree with both sides. So then, 
All right, can you it's, clarify the a Chun situation? Because I know something's wrong, but I never really, like, looked into it. Okay, so what I understand is that when she's in attack position, she doesn't give the buff from the Vortex that she plays with a C C1. And for, for me, uh, I, this, okay, I'll just go for both, both sides, right? In the, in the side of she is intended and she needs fixing. Uh, for the one that she, she needs fixing first, because that's the one that uh, we were dis everyone's discussing, is that since the orb is on the field, they should have all the buffs that comes with the, with the orb in her kit because it's on the field, even though she's on the tag position. But from the other side is that all of her extra buffs from for the vortex is locked behind the passive and only works when she jumps in the fray for like uh, a couple of seconds. And then the buffs, you can clearly see it all goes out. And it goes into when she's in the tag position, all the buffs are gone because she's it, the buffs are in her passive, not in the skill itself. So how yeah, they so like when when she's not physically on the field, the passive isn't being read by the game. Yeah, but then the other side, the one Pain and Solo um, is fighting for, is that they it should be there because the orb is there. But the one what I believe, but then of course I like the other side because it works even if you have an A copy, so I'm not complaining either way. What I believe is that all the buffs should go away because the buffs are tied towards her her tag, uh, her passive, which she is not there anymore. If you're looking at a different unit like Street Poison, all her C1 buff, all her, yeah, all her C1 buffs, it's not from the passive itself. It's from, it's within the skill. So then it, that's why it's there. But then, of course, both sides work. I, I think the major argument is the idea that, at least specifically for athlete Chun-Li, her wind vortex should function as its own character on the field, kind of like how Gen's clone does. Um, mm -hmm. There's no reason that the passive text shouldn't kind of just exist when the vortex is on the field, because that's how it reads. Like it, it clearly was intended to exist as this entity that is separate from Achun, that isn't considered when she is on the field, because it says when the vortex is on the field. So like, shouldn't the intended behavior line up with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we need a, 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 a understanding, uh, not understanding, maybe a universal, uh, consistency of wording where uh because i like to throw out s yang into the mix obviously they corrected it now apparently but uh that issue where it was like it said uh unit or target versus s yang or self so i think that's also an issue yeah i don't know why every unit has different things to describe something similar it just makes things more complicated right and if we're already used to how one works we can make a connection on how this works but then they just want to you know either use words or words that they feel is fit through the translation but yeah like using the words with targets it doesn't it, it implies everyone not just himself so like how do you Chinese people handle plurality. Just curiosity. I don't know. Like, don't it, know. could it could it be a simple issue, or like they? Because I'm I'm thinking like it's a tonal language, so like there's already a huge barrier in how their language is interpreted when spoken, um, because like the tone of what words they're using will change the meaning of what they're saying more so than the actual content of the syllables themselves. Um, and so that can be causing a huge transliteration issue where like things are plural that don't necessarily need to be, that aren't really wrong because you can still pluralize a single digit thing, but it's confusing because it implies things that aren't really there and it's just a mess. So 
I guess now to move on from that because it's it, it's literally seeming like it's probably a lifestyle because it's one of the things that people do out in terms of progression where they thought that maybe uh not six months away you're getting close to there like a year a year and a half down the line if the game is still surviving then the free to play or the beginner section of the game is less walled um it's more easier in terms of materials and stuff like that and also overall it oh it's always the case in every other game is the game if taken with care should get better over the years and if that's the case hopefully thumbs up the two, uh, two years down the line we're looking at the potential what street fighter duels could be it's just now the question is is like will they care enough to try or are they looking like they're willing to try do you guys think that that's also the case do you see progression now that is somewhat satisfactory or anything at all no no one sees progression at all i had my mic it is um i don't know if i see progression because the, the way they're at the moment treating bugs is that it seems like they only patch them if there's a youtube video made about them it happened with summer yang it happened with vigilante x move it happened with at least shun and and what's the other character that's getting fixed again uh, it just feels like like we have to make videos outside of this discord even when this discord has a dedicated channel towards bugs and we report them the way people want them to be reported and also so just one so more I saw something thing. interesting sorry. happen sorry I, I i saw something interesting happen recently where there was like a thread on a on the reddit that was like calling people to the discord to like scream at the game devs and like there was this whole like game-wide ecology to it almost where people were like kind of funneling everyone towards the feedback to try and get some of those bugs answered and that i feel like pushes the content creators to make videos calling for these bugs to be answered because like the entire community is talking about it and people are on their comment sections being like what's going on with this and you know what i mean so like maybe this is something we as a community can leverage and like talk to the content creators and be like hey be our hired muscle and scream at the devs for us because they're not listening like this could be something we could use if this is actually how they're being maybe maybe we can take advantage of it i don't know yeah but it's it's still just wrong no if we have to go to content creators when there is other ways to contact the devs or there should be other ways to contact the devs and that doesn't work either. I feel like there's just something wrong. Like, we shouldn't have to go to, to third-party creators when we have our ways to get to the devs normally. But that's my take on it. Well, like, we know concretely for the Evil Ryu bug that that came up through the game feed. Like, as much as all the content creators were, like, freaking out about the bugs and the billions of damage and stuff, like, that came up through the game feedback channel Dino pushed it up to the devs and it was patched within the 24 hour period. Like that was the system working as much as the devs will cow to pressure from the YouTube side of things. Like there are clear instances of, of the game feedback system working. I mean, yeah, there, there's clear instances, but there's just so many times that it doesn't. And that is what bothers me. I guess I think I think maybe the lack of communication in the sense that like so like Blizzard would do things where like yeah they have great patch notes and stuff but sometimes they would go and make up a, a non patch note almost where uh, a member of their community management team would come out and be like hey we know y'all are talking about this we know y'all are upset about it it's not going to change and these are the reason why like Blizzard would do stuff like that to kind of be like, these are the circumstances, it is what it is, deal with it or stop playing. And 
the the lack of communication from the devs is a huge amount of that problem where like we don't know if so your mic cut out. cut out sorry we don't know if something is being worked on or not like we don't know if this is just a problem that's taking four months to fix or if it's something they're ignoring or if it's something they just don't have on their radar at all or if it's been deprioritized in favor of something else we have no idea where they are in their roadmap or what's coming down the pipe, what bugs they're working on fixing, what bugs they're aware of, that sort of thing. Like a, a, a great part of patch notes is the end where they go known bugs and they list a bunch of crap that they're working on, but they aren't clearly fixed and ready to go yet. But like, hey, we're working on it. That that sort of stuff would go a long way towards yeah, just any way of acknowledgments that we're being heard. This would be great. So, yeah, yeah, I like to. Oh, go ahead. I just want to add one thing. So, the, my the question is, uh, you would the patch note thing, would that be enough? It would be a great start because then at least we know. So that what it's makes get, it enough? being worked on? What what well, actually like it, makes it enough? It, is the question. it creates it creates uh it creates an a some transparency between us where we can go okay on. September 14th, you said you were going to start working on this, that you knew about this issue, and now it's November 20th. It's been three months or whatever. Yeah. Where are we at? What's going on? Are you still working on it? Like, we, yeah. we can actually, like, hold them accountable based on, like, okay, we sent this to you at this time. You guys clearly responded to it. We still don't have a response. We, we still don't have an actionable change, but, like, where are we at? You know what I mean? Like, it, it allows that dialogue to, to continue. Okay, because the, the, the reason why I ask is just like, I don't want it to be a, a, a point where, you know, they get to the goalpost and we move it back. So the, the only question is, is when, when is it enough? Like, when is it, what is the point of them? Like, we're satisfied with the communication level. If that's why, okay, that's why I, I asked if, if the patch notes would be enough. Like, if they said, these are the bugs we know, this uh, uh, is being worked on. Is that enough? Uh, yeah, I would say that, like, uh, how they respond with all these bugs and all these broken stuff within the game is that when it's already in a very high level of just, like, uh, like annoyance or, like, the, the whole community is already pissed off or something is, like, it's really out of hand, then they start to give a shit and they start to care. But then we didn't. We don't have to get to that point for them to start acting. And then um, if we always keep continue to to reach that point, then people are already gonna start being fed up and actually just like you know, they they feel like they need to uh, always go through it's the extreme to get stuff done, which should not be the case. So yeah, like I mean, if they give a sense of you know clarity and relief, or just say like, oh, you know, uh, there we know this is a thing, you know, we're gonna fix it. It doesn't have like what book said doesn't have to be right now. And also a sense of oh, we made a mistake. Here's a compensation. You know, that's like oh shit, we did all this. We we everyone's in uproar. You you fixed it like ages after it is already reported and stuff. And there's nothing to say thank you, you know. How much would be enough for the thank you? Three hundred gems. I mean, with how much things are like, how much things are broken, you know, then we're gonna have a lot of thank yous, right? Or a lot of yeah. uh, congratulations. Yeah. But I would just say, if there's something major, um, if there's something major, then yeah, give the people like. People spend on, for for example, you spend on a unit, you think it worked a certain way, and then it co the unit costs thousands of bucks. You know, giving them like a ten divination ticket, sorry for it, and then here's ten divination because you know H hun is a divination unit. Yeah, how would that ten divination break the game's economy, right? It doesn't. It just shows, you know, some token of, you know, sorry for the the people, and also like, oh shit, you know. Fine, we'll give you, we'll, we'll cut you a slack. Like with the S Yang, we don't expect anything too major. Because, you know, he, everyone's probably has him, but like people probably spend like 
hundreds or thousands for on divination tickets just to max h on out and giving nothing to compensate that you know it feels okay. like a what would the compensation legitimately look like something like an evil ryu like a free but copy of evil ryu is like 10 10 special right maybe like 10 divination because you know she's an expensive unit so 10 divs is, is it would be a uh like you think that would be satisfactory because i noticed a lot like whenever people are like when they have the the oh here's 300 for maintenance or whatever or here's 300 because of this or whatever people are like oh gee thanks this is absolutely nothing and that's where i'm like is 10 divs and t- or 10 special summon tickets like that's like uh, does that make you happy um definitely if you're comparing it to a different game right something with the high high people the, the games that actually want to last long you know in it for the long haul um and you know has a brand like epic seven for example something's wrong with the character's kit mm-hmm. they straight up have a refund button you know okay refund all this this or swap it towards a different unit you know that would be the ideal uh it it, it, it might be hard for you guys to think like oh shit that's too much to ask yeah but that really sounds like a lot yeah that looks that sounds like a lot but realistically for if you if you do want to if the game cares about its health and its long longevity, if there's something ma- as major as a unit that's broken and people spending a lot of money for that unit, they should have the right to either refund it or, you know, keep what is keep if, if the unit's broken in a bad way, like keep the current state of the unit or swap it, you know, with uh, with something else. That's what other games do, but for the current state of yeah. how. I, I personally never seen that, so I'm curious what what game has does that. Actually. Epic Seven, Epic Seven has that. Really? Okay. I don't know if you guys have that. I um, so I they seven. nerf, they nerf like a light and dark unit, which is Infernal and Master. Mm-hmm. They nerf it and they give you a token to swap it with anyone. And this is this is the thing with Epic Seven as well. They implemented a pity that never that never had, and from the whole. If you summoned in that banner or that light and dark banner, uh, they give you this special token to give you that pity, like in a token form, because it te- you technically spend that amount pr- prior when the pity wasn't implemented, and now it's implemented. It's not fair that you've summoned with the disadvantage. So we're gonna give you this token, which is basically a pity token. So th- that's that's how you know if a game is generous or cares about the community and how it affects the game's health and towards uh i would say i, I don't want to say this game is a cash grab but it kind of looks like it i mean it's, uh, i'm at that level too where it's kind of like you know if it looks like a duck talk like a duck guys like a duck we gotta at one point in time gotta say it's a pigeon you know uh, <laughs> but no yeah, right like, you, you got you got to point it out like that's the truth of the matter it's just that like if they don't want it to be called a cash grab but at the end of the day like their actions speak louder than words and i'm sorry you, you're slapping us in the face we're going to call it what it is yeah i mean and Ramiel said that it is not a it's not generous i mean i do agree that it's like if you if you look at street fighter it's also really not generous with the with the unit acquisition uh, maybe more generous I mean, than Epic. It, it is and it isn't. That's where it's like, I don't know. It, it it's, is for the OG units. Okay, but so it, question. It, Let me ask you this. I played a game where um, they had light and dark units as their inferno as well. I think that's a consensus of cross gotcha games in general. And what they did uh, is they had an event called Lucky Summit. Okay? And what that did was Kind of like divination where you pick any unit you want in the game doesn't matter regardless of what it is it, legendary not doesn't matter and you could chuck it into that system right it'll be your target and then it'll show you after 100 pulls you'll get one copy and then every 100 pulls it resets 
So, and but after your first hundred pulls, it will be a hundred and ten pulls, and then you'll get a, a copy, and then a hundred twenty pulls, and then you'll get another copy. Until there's no limit. Uh, actually, correction. The only limit was is that it was ten pulls a day. So hmm, that's an interesting. Uh... Yeah, so it, it it allowed me to build up the quote unquote uh, master uh, inferno units and be able to like get them to a point where they were usable. So how Idle Heroes did it back in the day, I don't know if it's still the case. It probably is. Um, the game started out without a pity, right? And people are mad, and they introduced a pity, but they did it somewhat special. So basically, for for any player to get the maxed out units, you need about 2,000 summons. And every 100 summons, uh, the percentage of said hero, whether it was Light Dark, which is Master Infernal, or any of the four uh, regular factions, went up. So that unit had a higher chance of being pulled. And when the character is launched, the, the, the pull rate of that character was already doubled. So let's say it was a 0.5% and it became a 1%. And so it went up, and if you did 500 summons and you didn't get a current, uh, character, you were guaranteed to get said character. You were guaranteed to get it. And then, then you did your 2000 summons and you got the character, because you needed 9 copies to max it out. Uh, and well, realistically you always get the character after uh, 2000 summons. And this was like the same way for, for Mastery Infernal or for regular units, right? You didn't have a like, special way to get the units. You didn't have divination. You didn't have special summon tickets. Uh, and on, on, overall, it was just I'm all better because it's more streamlined in a way you get units. Because right now, if you're joining and you're a new player, special summon tickets release after chapter 2. Chapter 2, let that sink in for a moment. You're there. After like 5 minutes of playtime, you unlock it, maybe there's a special summon event and you get special tickets. You have no idea what you're going for and you just grab it and then it so happens to be a collab unit. And then, then some free-to-play dude got a random copy of Virgil and now he's stuck with it. Because he didn't know better, because the game literally tells you, okay, yeah, click Virgil when it's his event. So it just, that just makes no sense. Like Divination only unlocks after chapter 1540. Yeah, that's when it unlocks. And then it tells you to grab a bison. And then after that, you can choose whatever you, whatever you want, right? So this is where you guys are hiding at. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do. I do. I do agree. But in like uh, what Payne said, right? Like when you start to see units that return, then you know that the game is dying. But then I would... I would argue that I kind of want units to return so that we have a better chance, you know, if someone left it as like SS or S plus or mm -hmm. SS plus, they have a, another chance to reobtain the unit. I don't know how they're going to make yeah, it. Yeah, I don't understand that. Hold on. I'm sorry to cut they're you off. They're not going to do it. They're not going to bring them back. 110% like they are not going to bring them back. Oh, no, they will. No, then, they you will. Know, the game they, is they, dying. But that's the thing. Here's my question. That, that blows my mind, though is how does that determine that the game is dying when we want it to happen mm -hmm. like because in all because of their it games... should be at least like like anniversary is a thing so like a mm -hmm. year later dmc event does that legitimately mean that the game is dying but also so... from what i heard <laughs> is that in every crunchy game events never come back with the same units they're not going to come. They, I, I'm telling you, they're not going to come back because this is the exact same thing that happened with AFK Arena. 110%. Like, people were complaining, like, oh, like, I didn't get to start the game when, I, I don't know if you guys played it, like, Eins was here in the beginning, so I, but I want him. And people were complaining, but all the players that have him were saying, oh, but this was a collab unit. I spent so much money at this X amount of time 
it's not fair that all of a sudden you're just going to bring them back. And so what they did was they did a little um, borrowing system. It's like a, it's called mercenary, like a garrison system where basically you, like, let's say for me, I have Virgil fully maxed out, whatever. It doesn't even matter if it's fully maxed. I have Virgil, for example. And let's say Tix wants Virgil. And what he will do is he would have to grind the game. It's like you could get one, like whatever, currency once a month or whatever. And you have to grind the game. And then with that currency, you will borrow or you'll rent um, Virgil from me, but you act like it's your own. You have to build him out. You have to do his FS, his gears and cars, everything. That's all on your own. You're not taking my stuff. And you build him out. And then every month or whatever, you have to um, keep renting him out. And then after six times, um, it's free. So basically, it's your own for free now. And I believe that that's what they're going to do just to please everybody. And uh, technically, that, that'll be good for free to play because in free to play, they don't have to spend. They just have to grind the game out, just play the game, and they get to um, borrow a character that they'll get to keep their own, basically. So, but my my only counterpoint to that is, what about the Monster Hunter Ten frags? Wait, what's one? Uh, oh yeah, we have we all have twenty four image can frags. fragments in our inventory. Yeah. So and so, yeah, and they also so, like did specify that it is expected to return. That's why I'm like. I'm questioning on why people are like it's dead when people if that happens when it's been made known expect a return because of just it's there. He actually, I mean, the game actually turtle. said expect it to return. Huh? I, I don't think that was ever confirmed. No, I they never said, actually seen not a expect, message uh, with. maybe the wrong word is uh he says I don't see why not mm -hmm. when the frags are there. But only so, time so, will tell. Then that, 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 that's that, what. Let me clarify. I that's that, the expect is the wrong word. Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing that happened with AFK Arena. And eventually, all the stuff that's in your back that you cannot use, like from events and stuff, mm -hmm. you change them out for cash or diamonds. In this game, wise, you'll exchange them for those, so you can uh, empty out yeah, your bags. Yeah, but we have actual Wait, Monster yeah. Hunter can frags. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and AFK Arena is the same thing. Like, I'm like, I don't know if you guys ever played it. This game is exactly like AFK Arena, except for like certain little different things. But the way that the shops is run, the way the pricing is done, the way everything looks, like I'm sure you guys watched Hayes Mac um, video about how this game is basically AFK Arena copy of it. So if they end up and then uh, and like i like i kid you not if you think this pay to win is really bad if karina was worse the first year was horrible now now the pay to win is better for sure like i was showing pain just recently like if karina basically whatever like for example like dividend, like let's say the pop-up value that comes out when you do something in the game and for like 99 dollars um you get like 80 div divination tickets in afk arena now you get 200 divination tickets the chest that you get to pick out the cash whatever you get two and a half times more than what you get in um then street fighter and then the same thing with the first one like the first pick is everything's doubled by now just because they wanted to make it more friendly yeah but oh, i have a i have a question with the garrison stuff because i i used to play it like back in the day like the first year uh, yeah and for me i do like the garrison idea but then we don't have collabs as legendaries right now so it's going to be quite hard to implement too. yeah That's it's going to be quite hard to implement something that costed someone a lot of money uh for it to get for free maybe there's a way to like you know rent it out and then a chance to use your special summons when your renting out is finished on that unit it's going to be weird because if you open up the special summons again then the, the there's stuff with the licensing because afk arena did the garrison thingy and then they had like controversies right mm -hmm. uh with the with the contracts that they did with yeah. the the they're getting sued. They're getting sued yeah. by a lot of collabs because the collabs they want to get paid again because you're they have a contract that oh okay we'll have it out for 14 days for example that's it but then if they're gonna go out and 
bring them back in a way technically but then afk actually won that um lawsuit by the way because in their term they never brought the characters back they just because the thing is what their argument was is that technically people can still merc for example eins and stuff like that they could still merc him but then now they could keep him as in garrison and so you don't you you can use him more than three times a week type of thing mm-hmm. so they actually won that case uh, we yeah, never okay. actually answered Turtle's uh, question. The reason why we say that the game will die when it happens is because historically in every single crunchy game, um, when reruns happened, the game ended within six months of that time. That is why everyone is saying if this happens, then the game is dead. But here's my question. Reruns of what? <laughs> Reruns of, of events, of, of heroes. Of, okay, of I get that. Uh, events, but not collabs. No, no, collab, as, as in units returning. That, that's why I'm units, saying, if Devil, Ma- Devil May Cry came back, how is that a bad thing when they have to freaking pay for Devil mm-hmm. May Cry to be in the game? It makes mm-hmm. no sense for a dying game to pay a licensing fee in that shit for the month for a fucking shit that's gonna that they're just gonna turn off the next month. Yep. Maybe if it was a regular make sense. event, I get. Like if we keep seeing the same fucking event over and over, where it's like Sagat like ten times, I get it. Dead. We got understood. Sure. But like so collaborations, I have that kind of I I question that. I agree with that too. Oh, because, oh continue. Sorry. What were we gonna say? Uh, I was gonna say like historically or not historically i'm saying like logically what you're saying makes sense it shouldn't but what's being said is in the case of a crunchy roll game specifically that heralds doomsday what turtle turtle i get no, I, logically, I, it does not, shouldn't I make sense i get it if it was normal events i get it if it was normal events but not collapse mm-hmm. Uh, if, unless it's literally like the with thief in the night type of shit where they're gonna set up a trap get their last bag and dip i could maybe that i can see but like yeah, that's probably the case that could probably, that could probably the thing, be the case but the i still why see I it as the benefit turtle, the reason why i will agree with turtle on this is because of the fact that so if you do it and if you try to do this in a business standpoint for example if you bring back, let's just say, for example, Virgil, majority of the people that are going to spend already spent for him. So why bring him back so what free to play can just roll for him for free with whatever di- special tickets that they saved up? Like that doesn't make sense when they could go and be like, oh, let's bring back and let's bring in Mega Man Zero X where a lot of people want him. And people don't have him, so they'll make even more money because all the people that already spent for Virgil will, of course, buy Mega Man. So it's I don't like that whole rerun of collapse doesn't make sense. Like for me, it's more of don't bring more because the thing another thing too is like I would understand it if like like they were making money off of it, but each and every time a new collab comes out, they're losing money. Like they're making less money. I'm not saying they're losing money. They're making less money each and each time a new collab comes out. So what's going to be the difference if Virgil comes back again, for example? Okay. Let's let's look at it this way, right? Let's say they bring back Virgil in like a year. Realistically, most of the current whales will have moved on. Well, not all of them, of course, but there is there will be a vast part of the whales that are currently playing that won't be playing by that time, and there will be a way more new whales that that will be there willing to spend on that unit. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to code anything special for it because the files are already in the game. They don't have to put any effort into making the event it's because the event already money. existed. They're they really the don't contract. have to put efforts. Yeah, it's the least amount of effort for what they've already done. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it by financially as the business outlook, it makes sense for them to do an anniversary because, like, I I see it as the opposite for Virgil. For those people who never got the chance. And let's say they're still playing or they are new to the game and they're like they find out oh this is the first or second time coming back uh let me buy him get what i can i know i have an idea okay they're willing to anniversary these units 
then I know maybe if I keep playing a year down the line, I can get more Virgil or I could get that unit that I've been working for. There are those players that play for that long run. And there's also that push of people just always saying, ooh, double main card is here. That's cool. And they hop in. Like, that, 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 that's why I'm like, I, I don't see Doomsday when I see Collab. I see Doomsday if I see the same event uh, over and over and over and over. Yeah, that I get. Events and all the other stuff and units, like if, you know, they keep promoting Summer Buki over 20 million times. All right, cool. But collab, it just don't make sense. It don't fit for sure. me. I agree with you, right? I Like, it does not make sense. But the deal itself with this game and, and Capcom, from what we understand, also doesn't make sense. And historically, in, in Crunchy games, this has been the case. So for every single one of them. They just kept bringing back the old characters before the game died. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I ne this is my first crunchy game, so. <laughs> this is what happened with what game did Bane cover before he like took his year break? It was like Naruto thing. Oh, yeah, the Naruto one. Maybe that is that is what happened with that game. Like exactly what happened with that game. And then, like, randomly, the game just shut down. Like, they got a message, the game is shutting down, GG, thanks for playing. Mm. So that is why we are saying, if Collapse return with the same units, I'm not saying, like, let's say there's a new DMC event, there, there's a new character, I have no idea about the DMC universe. I don't know how many characters they can still add. But um, let's say it returns with Virgil or with Dante. Probably Dante, because Dante is the worst of the two. Uh... It'll just, it'll just be GG. All I know is Tix is over here saying, bring back um, Flame Chung Lee so he could break his free-to-play account. Exactly, bro. <laughs> the thing is, everything um, roots. That's what I'm saying. Everything it don't make sense. The, when, when it comes to money in the refund, like, it don't make sense. It, I, I'm so, the opposite. I don't see Doomsday. Yeah, but I wouldn't see Doomsday either, except for we know the histor history. Yeah. But one thing I will say about Sakura and, and Flamechon is I've seen uh, Dino say, uh, seen Dino tap out that Sakura, for those people that can't get her anymore, or Flamechon will return. Okay. Mm. Like, don't I, don't I'm, take I'm my on word on that, but I've, I'm I've on seen him type this. I'm, I'm the turtle, you know, <laughs> from Finding Nemo. Y'all know what he's on. <laughs> and uh, I'm just I need that stuff. I'm just coaxing. Um, I and if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And if it ends, I made wonderful friends. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, while you guys are talking, um, if you guys want to watch, I'm gonna do my um pop the fire real quick. <laughs> Try to see if I could hit and get the next chest. I think it was like 11.5 billion damage. So right um, now we're at um an hour. We can keep going. I like to normally do two hours. So I can split it into two episodes. But I think Evil Paul, you don't know. Uh, we're in a in a podcast. Oh, what the? Let me. Yeah. So you're be you're being recorded. You're, and oh stuff, yeah. Sorry, so my bad. You're being recorded for this topic oh, and okay. everything that's going on. <laughs> Oh, that's nice to know. Uh, uh, yeah, but for, for me, I, like with uh, with you know F F Chun and also um, Nero, like like those were good, right? Like maybe they could touch upon how you could get those discounts rather than just waiting one day for getting the Nero shards and then getting the full fifty bucks discount. But like it's their fault for them designing it so shit. You know, of course you're gonna have people buy it for fifty bucks if it's that easy to get to fifty bucks. But I mean, for them having the 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 consensus, oh shit, it doesn't go well. Like it's not as good of a um, of an income. We're not gonna do Nero again, right? But and that's because they did the shitty deal, uh, making everything so expensive. And we're just paying the price for their, you know, their deal. Yeah. But there is one topic I really want to cover in this podcast. I think Turtle knows it's coming. I think Tix knows it's coming. It. it is the fucking travel packs. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there is just 
and okay, I have ridiculous. concrete evidence. I have concrete evidence that the travel packs that they are saying are being bought are not being bought, and they're just trying to get people to spend. And honestly, I think it is. Yeah. I'm I'm a whale. I'm a spender. I like I don't follow me in that sense. But what I'm gonna say is that it is just completely outrageous trying to get people to spend for actually like for what like nobody actually bought it i know the people on my server there's three people that buy these packs the rest are free to play or like i mean i think even i know why they do there. it it's my question me, is, is it illegal it i i think it is it is you know how you can like you have the fuck around and find out mentality yeah. That is the thing that is happening now, because it is it is unclear. Yeah, I mean they did the same. And thing we noticed, with MHCN, right? With what? They did the same thing with MHCan, where fake bots were saying they obtained MHCan even though they weren't. I have not seen that, but that could very well have been the case. But yeah, Wait, for me. We I'm Go sorry. Ahead. So, like, if I saw, like, let's say 200 people out of nowhere bought travel pack number two, which I did sell the other day, like, does that make me want to spend? Like, is that supposed to make me want to spend? So, so, like, the reasoning for it is, let's say you don't know about how many people are on your server, right? And you see a lot of people buy this pack. You're more inclined to buy the pack yourself to not fall behind on your server because it is feeding into the competitive nature that every person has. And you see, oh, the, all of these people are buying this pack. And you're looking at it and, oh, it's 40, it's 45k gems. And people are buying this. If I don't buy this, I'm missing out on how many diffs is that? 90? I mean, I'm gonna it's fall behind. shitty, but the question is, is it illegal? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't think so, because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they're, and this is a pretty big company, so... I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing and if anything ever comes through like lawsuit wise they have something like they can be like oh yeah like look like there's the x amount of players that buy it or whatever like i'm sure they have something for them to be doing this because eventually somebody would will have noticed aka right now we've noticed it so also another thing what you're trying to say though is with the yeah it's a um it's like the competitiveness but also i feel like they they are also doing that is because for example like once people start realizing oh, hey we could get free diamonds if x amount of players from the server does buy it then um and let's just say they like start checking up on it randomly and they're like oh it's like 199 out of 200 let me just buy it so i can help and do it like that's another thing that could happen that um they implement this scam basically well, yeah for me i see it as like a known uh, psychological tactic in the gacha industry that works where like mm -hmm. in the market if you open the shop there's like the free section alongside the paid section and also um the red dots that you have to click every time you reopen the game in the shop mm -hmm. or stuff. You know, it reminds them that uh, that it's there. And, you know, like having that red dot on the travel pack again, like you have to click this, remind, it gets them towards that page and it could potentially convert that into a sale. That's the one it's thing like, I, I think I would have tried to cut you on. Go ahead. No, no, no but like it, I, it, if they, if every gacha game implements that, then of course, you know, it's working. So another thing I don't know if you guys noticed is like let's say you know when you guys go to the mall and then um you you know how like um I think it's like the daily one whatever like um you have to I don't know if you guys noticed that how you have to actually scroll up just to get the free daily mm -hmm. um from the mall yeah like why can't they just put us in the top already where the daily is why do we have to why do they bring us all the way in the bottom so we can look at all the purchases that we can make and stuff like that so. I do Which get what's specs saying. available. So one huh? thing I, I, I wanted. I told you about bought us out every day. What? I told Evo bought us out every day. No, that's every mm. day. I have. Yeah, no, but I thought he just he just bought it every day. No, no, I don't even buy that, those. Given that, okay. 
no, no. no. <coughs> the only thing, only thing I I ever buy is like maybe the perks and like those monthlies, and then all uh, I like like I said, I learned a lot from AFK Arena. I spent stupid amount of money on stupid stuff on AFK Arena, so I learned. And the best value you you can basically get is from um the pop up value the, the poison the thing packs. That you get. Mm-hmm. No that, way, that's the best value. That is, is that is that, actually the best value. That is the best. But like ninety nine dollars, for example. Mm, tell me anywhere you could find in in game in the mall or anywhere where you can get. Let's just say for ninety nine dollars, you could get um, twenty thousand cart and workshop tokens, eighty divination tickets, and um, well, how 56 much? Fifty like, six fighter XP or break stone chest mm-hmm. or two hundred six uh, two hundred twenty four cash chests. So tell me where you can find something that you could pay a hundred dollars for all of that. Uh, and you need all of that. That's the thing. The divs are probably the highest value I can think of. The workshop tokens are pretty low value because you can get the crusade grant, which is insane value. But and- we're paying though. Like we're not talking about free to play or anything like money wise. If you're just going to be like, okay, I'm going to spend a thousand dollars. Let's just say I want to spend a thousand dollars. What's the best value I can get with this thousand dollars? Like, what would you buy with $1,000 then? That depends, right? Because, like, you can say $1,000 in a certain time frame or $1,000 unlimitedly. Like, you, no. you get... Because if you if you have time to spare for that $1,000 spending, I would buy the grants and stuff uh, up to the $100 mark over that uh, Street Poison pack. No, I'm 100. talking about like you have one day to spend it all one thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, then I, yeah, that would be the 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 best use of your hundred dollars. So, but I'm mean, evil. You have, go ahead. I'm I'm as someone who got really shafted with divs. I am more leaning towards let's say Sagat released right, and then there was this pack of one hundred dollars where you get forty divs, forty chests, or one sixty cash chest, and a free copy. I think the free copy is more value if your luck is not great. I think because you get for that hundred dollars, you get a free coffee and you get like twenty divs. Forty divs. Oh, uh, is it forty? I thought it was twenty yeah. divs. No, no, it's it's forty divs. If I remember correctly, I might be completely wrong and I might be gaslighting everyone in this call. Uh, so you can look oh. only, you can look at the summary bookie pack. Yeah, it's yeah, forty yeah. divs. It is forty divs and forty chests or one hundred sixty no, cash chests. No, no, it's just the copy and forty divs. Yeah, it's a copy and forty divs, which is basically equal to eighty divs, right? Because in eighty divs, you're based, you're like should get about one or two copies. Yeah, but now once again, though, now you're missing out on t- workshop tokens or faith gems or um. Yes, but you're guaranteed to rewards. Hmm? You're guaranteed to rewards. Aren't yeah, yeah, them? for sure. Well, you, you're guaranteed that copy for sure. I'm saying there's an argument to be made. I'm not saying that it's, it's yeah, actually yeah, yeah. better value. Okay, mm-hmm. so aren't the, like those random grants like the best value, like the one that gives you like yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah but yeah. just think of someone who's spending one k. I see. Ninety nine percent sure they already have bought the grants and, and yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like the pop-up value, because like I tell everybody, because they'll go to the mall and be like, oh, I'm going to buy like um, the gift packs, I'm all oh, the monthlies, like, oh, that looks so good. Like, you no, know, like those are horrible values. I mean, you can argue that the best value is basically buying 10 bisons off the bat, right? In, if you start the game. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, if you're starting off the game, maybe, but um, technically not really. I would still think the pop up value because instead of getting divination tickets, you could go and get um, um, the purple purple tokens so you can start um, spam like um, summoning people. Because don't get me wrong, Bison is like the best like character to start off the game with, but also having multiple like copies of each character just so you could keep leveling up instead of getting stuck at like, oh man, my character's at an S and I need another copy and I don't have enough tokens and stuff. How how do we get to this conversation? <laughs> no idea. No, oh, I, I have no idea. To We're bring it back about, to yeah. the original topic that what I did want to yeah. say was the travel packs. On the travel mm-hmm. packs and the whole thing. I think like it's it's more of just 
monetization business tactic and that's just the way the game ui and how the devs design it to make the most money you know mm -hmm. they're going to pull and put the low hanging fruit as much as possible one thing i'm gonna add though is this according to bookish is not illegal and i trust him in this but saying that this game knows what it's doing is, is just wrong given the amount of illegal things that are still in the game because hidden pities on gambling are completely illegal and they're still in the game i'm Wait, not saying one? they should be removed uh 250 divs equals guaranteed copy 30 oh, yeah, yeah. equals guaranteed copy those are guaranteed how, those are scripted pulls how are how is that illegal though yeah i don't scripted know pulls. That's illegal i've seen a whole no, bunch I mean, of games in the that. Game. so one thing you gotta isn't that pity no because it's hidden it's not it's not stated anywhere therefore it's a scripted pull it has to be stated it has yeah. to be stated yeah i can see that it has to be stated for those kind of stuff like even ave karina it says like oh seven like pity system like 70 like i can go to the game and show you but it does say, mention it yeah you have to mention it or it's illegal but they could also say unless um somebody went and read the whole terms and condition of this game they could have hit it somewhere in there. You, we don't. I know. have, I have, I have read it. Okay. Well, I've, I've, I've not read it. Like I've not read the, 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 <laughs> the smallest of letters, but I've read it to the point where I can pretty confidently say it is not in there. Okay. I mean, they had like some some pity stuff or scripted pulls, and they just removed it right from the beginning. I mean, people were threatening them with lawsuits when Image Ken was around. Because it was illegal. Yeah, and the, they the got... Scriptals. I mean, they got their refunds uh, through because they they used that as a as an argument. Mm -hmm. So it is very much illegal. And it can very much get it removed from the App Store and from Play Store. And now we're all fucked. Yeah, you can't list a percentage rate for a fixed thing. You know how dumb this whole refund thing is, though? Is the fact that, like, I remember one time I bought something and then it popped up again, and I was like, "Oh, I could buy it again." So I did, and then I didn't get the re the, the what I purchased. And when I went to go to Apple, well, I went to Crunchyroll first, and they said, "Oh, go to Apple." So when I went to Apple, um, basically what what they said is that the fact that I bought it the first time and got it, they can't do anything about the second one. They kept rejecting my refund. Oh, Evo, I have a I have a similar situation when I used to spend. I used to spend in um, Summoner's War, and there was this pack where you, uh, uh, yeah, Summoner's War. There was this pack where it gives you these promotional items to make your characters towards uh, you know, five stars or six stars and something like that. And I bought it two times, and I refunded right because I didn't get the second one in my mailbox, mm -hmm. and they did was your account was banned because for Wait, refund what? yeah my account was banned because i asked for a refund for one of the purchases but then the other one went through and i got the Ooh. item and yeah i long story short it took like a couple of months and then they went to my ticket or something <laughs> like that and then they open they said okay here's here's your account back but then at that time your your account basically ruined because mm -hmm, yeah. yeah you didn't get to play for a couple months yeah that's, that's how cool. ticks became free to play no actually i became free to play because of uh a one punch man game no, <laughs> not not the crunchy roll one because it's not even out but then like uh, uh i had to spend like 10 bucks or around 10 to 20 bucks a day for like this energy thing to be competitive it was really uh, mm -hmm. high in monetization and then once I can't keep up with spend, I spent for like one or two months and then 10, so it's around like 600 bucks, like comparing it to Street Fighter duels, like 600 bucks is nothing, but it was, it's something else in like a, the different game, right? Mm -hmm. In a different uh, environment of that game. That, that That's considered quite a lot, 600 bucks for two months. Um, and then I just stopped spending. And then after I stopped spending, the regret of that 600 bucks not being there anymore kicks in. And that's how I'm, I'm free to play in most gacha games. How do you play free to play? 
please teach me your ways. <laughs> uh, okay, to play free to play, it's easy if you have. Uh, for me, I play I play it because there's still a badge, right? If there's a sim uh, for your for your status of being free to play, then it's more easier because people That's can true. see that you're free to play. Like if there was no badge, there's no tell. Then it's gonna be hard, right? Because you're tempted to keep on spending. But it, for me, that to stop it from spending is that there's a badge that indicates uh, uh, that you're free to play or not. Like once it's gone, then you can't say it, right? Or yeah, like, there's there's meaning towards that title. Mm, that's true. That is true. That's why we just gotta wait for Taurus Island to or Taurus Taurus Land to come out. Can't wait for that game. Yeah. And yeah, I even though I said I'm free to play, I, I spend on Honkai Star Rails, a PVE game, <laughs> a PVE uh, game. That there, there's no leaderboards, there's nothing, no no multiplayer or uh, co-op in any sort. Well, actually, no, there's no co-op. Yeah, yeah, there's no co-op of any sort, and I still spend that game. I regretted it. All right, question, mm -hmm. ticks. I gotta ask. I asked this some something like this last time, but I'm gonna change it a little bit. What kit would take for you to spend? Oh, like that. Like, 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 no, 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 no. It can't be F Chung Li. It has to be different. Because we okay. already know it, and it has to be new because it, it's like it again, the whole doomsday, all that stuff like that. Yeah, we get it. Chung Li. But now what kit? What kit okay. would you would be like, I'm the moment you see it, your jaw drops. And your credit card flies out of its wallet and lands magically in your hand, and you just hit go. I was tempted to also spend for Virgil EX move, like anything that would that would the, the most the best return on your investment is bossing or units for events with leaderboards and stuff like that because you have a higher chance to landing a better spot to get more rewards. So you basically invest in. Uh, future income, right? Like in terms of uh, special summon tickets for ranking top three or something like that. So anything for PvP or anything like that, I would not spend for Nero, not even in the consideration. So that that helps in challenge mode and also in PvP. I I wouldn't I wouldn't be tempted, and I don't feel guilty not getting him, just because that those rewards you know aren't aren't like the most scary because you know. Uh, there's still a good chance for you to win in, uh, what you call it, in the final showdown, or to get there even without it. But so, Flame Chun Li, I was I was tempted. I I, I think when she was out, that's when you, when everyone started to uh, go crazy and everyone has it, and then everyone's in the leaderboards, you know high ranking and stuff like that because they have it but during that time it's like oh yeah i know it's but no one's using it right no you know it, it's not becoming a threat yet but now that everyone uses it it's like oh shit you know i would if she comes back i would probably but also virgil ex move i would have spent if it was like the tw version don buka right the T tw version yeah, you, you can buy it for like 15 bucks yeah, a straight up copy for fifteen bucks, but I'm not spending so much because the the scrolls are so expensive. Yeah. I'm not spending so much yeah. just for something that's two percent chance. Okay, so here's one thing I would like to ask then: What is the bossing kit that will look? What does that look like? I mean, any like it could like, be. What is the uh, pinnacle bossing kit? I guess. For you. It, it could be a DPS. It could be a support. Well, Flame Chun Li is a support and a DPS, but like it could be something that you cannot live without. You know, like, like Flame Chun. What? Give me something. Like for me, I, 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 I like I love Vega. I love uh, Dalsim. I love the ticks. I love the dots. So if you have like a legendary that like can bridge the gap between like bleed and fire, I'm buying it. Instantly on the spot, like how fucking you? I just need something with an amazing C two. What's a what's what's an amazing C two then? Guy, Lane Guy's C two is pretty strong because guys. I kind of like the mommy Dalsum C two. 
Huh? I like Mummy Doll from C2. Yeah, Mummy Sim C2 is nice too. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, uh, about, I think people are so sleeping on testing. them. I did testing on my mummy Dalton because I have him fully maxed too. Um, he's his C two is good, but the only thing is you have to like to make it really good is you have to use a super like here and there within the fifteen seconds or eighteen seconds whatever it lasts yeah. for. Yeah. But it also yeah. like messes up your uh, combos too much. Yeah, because it's fast. That's why I don't see an issue. That's why I thought you just pop it. Even he's you like, miss right. out. On, you miss out on too much damage. Do no damage. A combo. So. A combo is a combo is so yeah. important in damage. Yeah, because you only get like let's say seven to eight rotation of a full combo. If you're gonna use three three of them just for Mummy Dawson, where now if Mummy Dawson's his C two was doing like ridiculous but can't this damage. Same, wait hold on, now i'm confused but like i'm gonna talk uh i guess more in the eyes of tish because he understands where i'm coming <laughs> from it can the same be said for dawson then ticks yeah wait, dawson cool. sticks is really good though like his if you tick and if you build him up and like no, oh, no like I'm right a now, what i'm saying is i'm a dawson main and everyone yeah. is like they look down on him because of that fact that like oh he has to like they don't understand that he has to ramp and build up. So like yeah, I, yeah but that's a C one. Yeah, but like I see it the same as the super. Like I don't. No, like, no, 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 no. C one is different because C one normally you have a su support as in you get healed or shield or maybe like three poisons buff. What about but, like bison? I use a C one very often. You're I the only one. Mattering the situation. Like, but that's mm. what I'm saying. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly what Flake just said. I'm the only one. That's why I'm like, I am. I don't see an issue where it's like I I'm chucking a, a super for the end result. Like, look, I'm seeing at the end line versus what how to get so, there. Let me put it like this, right? You're you're playing versus boss fights, right? You want to maximize your damage. Mm -hmm. How do you maximize your damage? You want to maximize your damage output. The most damaging skills in the game usually are the combo or the C3. The C1 usually is the buff slots. The C2 is usually like the mediocre damage, which is why we need better C2s, which is why Mummy Dawson is good, which is why uh, Beast Sangeev is so good, because it doesn't mess up too much with combos. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the damage is still there from the combo and there from the C3. No damage from Beast Don't try to sell no, 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 no. Don't damage. try to sell I'm, 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 I'm not saying that he deals How damage. I'm you. saying it is fine to you. use his C2 yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're most. We you know damage. why he's fine to use the C2. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. That's not even uh -huh. the case. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly using his C2 just to get people clumped up. Yeah. To get like, more damage out. So, Turtle, let me ask you this. So let's say since you said you're Dal on Dalton main, I'm, I'm tick knows already. I've been playing Dalton for a very long time too. Like that's why most of my like raid teams involves Dalton in it. But um, let me ask you this then: if you use Dalton's C1 and keep charging up throughout the game, does he do like? A little bit more damage or let's say okay equal damage to mummy dalsim or a little bit more a lot more like what do you think if let's say they both charge up who does more damage with their c3 or c2 i'm gonna say dalsim yeah, by what a little bit same well like, i don't have mummy dalsim built up so i can't say but i'm going to make a guesstimation that by a mile i think yeah. dalsim but here's the thing like you and I haven't spoken very often. Hello, I'm Turtle. Mm -hmm. I am the the <laughs> number one Daddy Dalsum appreciator. I have been spreading daddyism since beta, <laughs> since before the game was like even a thing. Like I've been there day one, Dalsum, telling everybody, mm -hmm. "Hey, Dalsum's the best unit in the game." I have I didn't say anything outside of that. I've always stated Dalsum is the best unit in the game. People mm -hmm. look at me like I have ten heads. And I'm like, all right, cool. I and the book book makes fun of me all the time. I am anti-meta. When everyone was on mid Ryu, I was like, okay, have fun with that. When everyone was on Guile, I'm like, okay, have fun with that. When everyone's on Monster Hunter Clan, I'm like, okay, have fun with that. While I'm over here just yogging my way through and enjoying my <laughs> life with Dalsum. Also, yeah. one thing you should know about me, I hate Beast Zangief. I have him built up. 
I am five. I am five out of six cards. He is fighting spirit 30 and I will never, ever, ever use him ever.